Hello everyone, my name is Ricardo Costa and welcome to 10 days of Photoshop. If you're starting or don't have any experience with Photoshop, during these 10 days we will start from the beginning, step by step and get to know the basics that I believe you need to know to get started in Photoshop. You may find in the description the link to download all the files for this project and also a PDF with Photoshop shortcut keys. This is the first of a 10 day series and today I'm going to give you a quick tour of Adobe Photoshop for those of you who are completely new to the software. So if you have Photoshop open, let's dive right in. First things first, let's make sure we're all in the same page. I'm currently using Adobe CC 2023 for Mac. If you're using a different version or Windows, some things may be a little bit different in parts, but in principle it should be the same. So go to Window, Workspace and down to Select Essentials. This will set the interface to the default layout. Don't worry if your setup isn't exactly the same as mine, just follow along and you'll be good to go. So chances are you are already familiar with this, but just to make sure we keep all equal, let's talk about the application frame. The application frame is that dark background you see behind right now. If you go to the window menu and scroll down to the bottom, you'll find the options to turn on off the application frame. Now, if I click this, we can see the desktop. But personally, I find it much easier to work with the application frame on. So, for the duration of this course, we're gonna leave it on. Let's go again to window menu, scroll down and click on the option to turn it on. And there you have it again. Now, with version CXCs and above, we have this dark interface. However, if you're using an earlier version, you'll have the light interface. If you want to switch things up and change the color of your interface, just add up to the toolbar in Photoshop. For Windows users, this should be under the Edit menu. From there, scroll down to Settings and select the interface. Once you're in the interface menu, you'll see options to toggle between lights and dark mode. As you can see, I prefer it dark, so I'm gonna go ahead and select the darkest option available and hit OK. OK, so let's take a closer look at the interface. On the left hand side, we have the tools panel. This is where you'll find all the tools you can use in Photoshop. To activate the tool, simply click on it or use one of the keyboard shortcuts. You'll know which tool is active because it will have a highlight square behind it on the tools panel. And as you use each tool, you'll notice that the mouse cursor changes to indicate which tool you have activated. Many tools in Photoshop work in sets and you can access them by clicking and holding on an icon with a white arrow in the bottom right corner. For example, if you click and hold on the polygonal tool, you'll see three extra tools within that set. If I click and hold in the shape tool, we can see a variety of tools that we can use to create shapes. So don't forget that some tools work in sets. Moving down to the bottom of the tools panel, we have the foreground and background color squares. These represent the colors that you'll be using in your project. By default, the top square is the foreground color and the bottom square is the background color. To swap the foreground and background colors, simply click the button with two arrows to the right of the color squares the switch foreground and background icon. And if you want to reset the foreground and background colors to black and white, click the button to the left of that, the default background and foreground color icon. You can also use the D key to make the same action. Moving up to the top of the window, we have the standard toolbar. From here, you can access various properties, controls and creative features in Photoshop. And just below that, we have the control panel. This is where you'll find all the options and properties of the tool you have selected at any given time. It's a really useful panel and you'll be using it a lot as you work on Photoshop. So, as you can see on the screen, we have the Adobe Photoshop window open and this is the default setup of the interface. Now, as we move down through the tools menu and click on each tool, notice how the control panel changes. This is really useful as it displays all the various tools and options of that tool that can be toggled and used accordingly. Later on this course you will be learning how to use this panel as we start to use the various tools in the tools panel. So keep in mind, as you use your tools keep an eye on the control panel. 
Moving over to the right hand side, we have some panels visible and another slim panel with icons. These icons represent panels that can be made visible by clicking on them. Here we have history and comments and if I click the, the icon once, the panel will expand and if I click the icon below, it will expand to reveal that panel. If I click the icon again, the panel will collapse back in. Next to this, we have some panels that are already visible. Here we can currently see the layers, properties and color panel. You will use these panels a lot in your work. Now if you look carefully, these panels also include other panels as tabs. For example, on this layer panel, we have also the channels panel and the pets panel. What you will soon discover is that these panels, like the control panel, are essential in order to produce work in Adobe Photoshop. Moving on, if we come to the very bottom of the window, we have this thin strip. This also contains some useful tools and visual aids. If we look over on the far left, we have the magnification of our document. This will give you an indication at a glance of what percentage we are looking at the artwork in the canvas area. In this case, it's saying that my document is with 100%. We can also use this to zoom in and zoom out our document precisely. We can do this by clicking in the box and typing in a specific value. To the right of this, we have a visual aid box and more to the right of this, we can see a little white arrow. Now, if I click this, we can choose from a list of what we want to display in this box. For example, I'm going to choose document dimensions. Here I can see the size of my document. If I click and hold on this box, it will also give me a quick glance at the width, the height and resolution of my document, which is really convenient. Now I want to touch on document tabs. Sometimes you may find yourself using multiple documents at any time. In Photoshop, you can have multiple documents open at once. For example, let's quickly create a new document. I'm going to file new and just create and there it is let's make one more file new and click create and we have another now look again closely at the top left just under the control panel this time we have three tabs now we can click this to navigate to other documents if i click the next far tab we go back to our initial document if I click the next tab along, I can see the, the other document. And if I click again the next tab along, it will switch to the other document. So when we start to use multiple documents later on this course, we will be using document tabs in this way. And that's a quick tour of Adobe Photoshop for beginners. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more Photoshop tutorials. In the next video, I will show you how to create a new file in Photoshop but also open and save. I hope to see you there. Until next time, thank you.